I noticed that some of the button functionality has changed. I mean, my favorite three buttons over here, there's now less sort of double use of buttons. There's, you know, most buttons now work in, in single use. There's no double combination here. And the menu sim system actually seems more intuitive. It's brighter, obviously. There's more steps to it, but it does look much clearer and much more easy to navigate through. Mm. So very much we've taken a view that to make the camera as straightforward to utilize as possible, but not to alienate people who've spent many years working with EOS One cameras. Um, so the button placement is very familiar. A majority of the functions they're used to are exactly where they wanted them. But we've tried to simplify the operation. So we've reduced the, or almost eliminated, the double press and turning dials that used to happen on previous products. Um, as an example, there's on the top, there's new button for ISO as a specific button. Um, even throughout the menus, you can navigate the menus using um, the rear dial and the main control dial on the front. To jump the, right, the front dial will navigate across the tabs, the rear dial will go up and down the menus. And I see also that there's a joystick navigation there as well. Does that fit in with the rest of the operation? Yes, yeah, so in addition to the two dials, you can also choose to use the joystick to move up, down, sideways through the menu system. So Brian, there's been a few changes to the camera. What makes this easier to use than any previous EOS model? So I think it's true there's some, some changes. One of the keys has been to make it easier to use. It's been a, a key goal for the development teams. One of the areas that we've focused on is giving photographers a clearer view of the information. So information in the viewfinder itself has been increased. So things like ISO speed is permanently displayed in the viewfinder without resort to a custom function, for example. But also the viewfinder itself has been enhanced. So we've provided a bigger, brighter viewfinder, which I think will please many photographers um, to give them a clearer view of actually what they're shooting. So there's no need to buy a supplementary screen. The, the standard screen is now just as bright as you're going to get. So that's true. The standard screen has been increased in brightness. Of course, you can actually use your existing screens from previous products. It's the same size physically and they'll work properly. So my, so my grid screens are not redundant, they're still usable. Exactly, they're directly usable in this model. So what about menus? So we've also with capitalised on the extra real estate of the three inch display and um, we had a think of rearranging the menus into a quite logical tab structure. Um, we've got quite a lot of tabs but the idea has been to limit the items under each tab to what you can see on a single screen full. So I no longer have to scroll down and down and down. Exactly, it's just one, what you see when you first go into the tab, that's the whole selection of options in that menu. So what about personal functions though? Do I still have to plug into my laptop to be able to change personal functions? That's one of the things of the new uh, system, is that we've actually taken virtually all of the previous personal functions and created them as custom functions. So it means that the camera now has many more custom functions than before, hence the new grouping system, but actually you can configure the whole camera from the camera. This gives uh, people the ability to much more readily access all of the new functionality, whereas we thought that in some cases in the past, photographers hadn't fully personalized their camera because they hadn't taken the opportunity to connect it to the software and their computers. I frequently use a manual white balance. Are there any changes to the operation of that? The actual new camera has uh, five manual white balance settings. So you can actually work in several different ways compared to the previous product in that each of the white balance settings can be given a name. So not only can you record five on the camera and have them stored, you can give them a name. So it could be one for a certain event, for a certain studio environment setup, for uh, a reception, a hotel, whatever you can judge in advance. Additionally, you can record them from images that already you've taken on your memory card. It can evaluate the white balance from that scene, store it as one of the settings and apply it to further pictures. So you can actually pull, for instance, a white balance off a snow scene, for instance. Exactly. So if you've already shot a snow scene and you're in exactly the same conditions, you could pull the pic open the picture up, say, that's the one I want to use as my white balance reference, and use that for your future pictures. So I see the range of custom functions has expanded dramatically. Since we amalgamated custom and personal functions, it results in a camera with many, many more custom functions. And previously it was slightly confusing, there was no sort of rhyme nor reason to them. So what we've managed to achieve with this camera is a logical, or what we believe is logical grouping, into four custom function groups, um, split basically by functions. So a function for a group for exposure related, a group for focus related, and so on. 
and within each of the groups um, you can quickly navigate through all the menus they're all clearly explained in text um, plus also at the bottom actually once you're in the custom functions you can see which of the custom functions in that group have been changed from their defaults and what they have been changed to ah that's the little bit at the bottom of the menu when you enter a subgroup yes i can see there's a sort of little mark on there and that's what that is is it that's right Okay, yeah, that's that's nice because it's indicative. Very, it, it jumps out at you. But that you something can... has been changed from the default. Yeah. Additionally, since the custom functions may be relating to autofocus performance or how the camera actually responds in a given situation, you still have the ability to store three groups of your custom function settings. Um, in the past, that would be stored into personal function zero. This camera, they're stored into the custom in, as a custom function group, and you have three groups directly accessible from the camera from the camera and can you then archive those settings off as well? So this is also a new improved functionality is that you can save a whole dump your whole camera settings to a memory card. We had this in the past but now you have the possibility to dump up to 10 different camera settings on a single card plus you can rename the files you write to to be represent what you will recognize so that when you come back to that card and say ah uh, this is my settings for sports or this is my settings for weddings so there's nothing to stop you for instance on the occasion that you have to borrow an additional camera or, or such like for, a, for ha perhaps an event or something that you can actually copy your settings from your original camera onto a card and then move those settings straight into the higher or the borrowed camera to save you having to recreate all those functions again Exactly, that's precisely the reason it's there for. So, you know, if it's an agency photographer, either working from a pool of camera, or as you said, you rented an additional body to provide extra backup, or you um, needed to loan a camera for some reason, then you can ha carry a small memory card with a complete backup of 10 different cameras configurations that you've created, and pick up that body, load them in, and it will shoot like it was your camera. Okay, so you've got football, football match, studio, studio, studio session or whatever, all those different, so you've got 10 different settings. On a groups, single memory card. On a memory card. I see there's an option of My Menu. What's all that about? My Menu is a, a, a configurable menu. So photographers can put into there their six most recently or regularly accessed functions. So rather than have to perhaps search through several group levels of custom functions in which group is it in, where do I find the function for highlight tone priority, you can actually make it directly accessible from the My Menu. So I don't have to dig through the menus to find perhaps Mirror Lockup, which I use all the time. Exactly. So you can put Mirror Lockup in there in the My Menu, and it's the you know it's one of the items in there. You can sort the order of them, so you can add them in whichever order you like. Once you've got it six in there, that's it. But you can take one out or add others and, add and swap it for other ones. There's around 103 different items you can possibly add into the My Menu. The other thing is, is you can configure it such that when you press the menu button on the camera, it would automatically jump back to the My Menu tab, which means if you only need to change six things, you can auto have it such that when you press the menu, your six functions you want to change are automatically on that My Menu and in front of you. So for my studio shots then, I've got Mirror Lockup immediately accessible, but by having a different set, district, different group of settings, then I can access, for instance, a sports sports event or something. I can also access the functions I want there, like the autofocus control or the auto, or, autofocus sensitivity. Exactly. That's exactly what it's for. It's to give people direct access to the functions that are most important to them for the event and for type of photography they're doing on a daily basis. And of course, because it's fully configurable, if you change your style of photography from one day to the next, then tomorrow's set of menus can be loaded by restoring your backup, which you previously created.